or work and my dissertation. Alfalfa weevil is the work that I do for my dissertation. And so hopefully I can give you an update on what we've done so far this year and some of the new stuff that hopefully everyone has seen. If not, we can go through some of that also. Who in here grows alfalfa and has not seen this? All right, let the record show that no one raised their hand. <laughs> Excellent, perfect. Who in here has seen it and used it this year? Let the record show everyone is raising their hand. Excellent, very nice, perfect. Um, so if you really don't know what this is, and from what I understand, you guys do know what it is. Um, this was really a year that it really could have been useful. These are numbers from hay and forage grower from exactly this time last year to yesterday of this year. Arizona is not on it. Um, it's supposed to be reporting from USGA. I think they had Arizona somewhere at like 210. Um, I think we all know that I don't think anyone got 210 for A this year. I'm pretty sure at least 100 more than that. So you see changes from 215. We're trying to hide your floating bar from covering your words, but it's not showing up. Oh, let me just scroll to the top. It should go away, hopefully. This I think I can uh, I can do this for you as you present because I can look at the screen and scroll it. Oh, let's not do that. Okay. okay. We'll work on it for you. So what were numbers this year? 300, 310, 320, I think I heard upwards of 340 this year. So pretty good year. Um, you can see across the board, huge differences. You go from good in California from 200 to good now, 345. So really good year for it. Managing that, trying to get products, that from what I've heard is a whole completely different story, um, but at least the numbers on the retail side, very big difference from last year. You fix one thing, you break another. Here, okay. So it's always nice to have those numbers. So we can look at some of the numbers that they had from last year, and we can use that tool using those slide bars that we did to be able to see. So we can look at the low one in there, the 200, and we can see what that would have been, and what that threshold would have been, 1.7 at premium starting at 215. And I just chose $20 an acre to treat as an average for all these scenarios. Um, 1.6 and 285 would have been 1.2. Very different for this year because prices were so high. Premium, for some interesting reason, had a lower value on the, the range than good did. Um, I'm guessing that's a normal USDA mess up. 320 to 20 would have been 1.1. So one thing that I learned this year is I need to get with my IT guy on campus because it went higher than 320. A year and a half ago when I built this, I, I don't know if any of us would have seen that actually happening. So at 345 for good, I actually had to go back to the calculations that I had that built this system and be able to analyze and figure out what it would have been for that. So it would have been one for 345 a ton and at 400.8. So these per 20 sweeps, again, hopefully we're breaking up our field into quadrants and doing five sweeps in each quadrant. So that's where you're seeing these numbers from the slide before and this slide breaking it down into in those four quadrants, you would have had 20 sweeps. It would have taken 34, 32, 24, all the way up to less than 16 per 20 sweeps. So we're much lower when these values are that high. And if we're able to get the product and we're able to treat at around $20, we're less than one per sweep. Mind if I ask what did people treat at this year? Anyone have a number per sweep that they treated at? 
Saw one. It's right. We didn't treat, so I can't answer. Didn't treat? Due to not it being available? Too close to harvest. Too close to harvest. Okay. We got to lunch one. Okay. But so I'm still, we've got a, another trial that we have going on out here. We still have a decent amount. I'm still above one per sweep in the fields right now. So I don't know if you guys are experiencing the same thing if you're still seeing them in your field right now. Yeah. So one to two. Okay, perfect. That pulls it into this next one for me. Oh, I missed it by one large larva per sweep. So if we look at that $300 um, value and we look at that $20 to treat, well, if you miss it for one large larva to treat, two instead of one, it's a big deal when you actually look at the numbers. One large larva, so again, these are all based on the algorithm, is doing 0 0.06 ton per acre damage. It's taking 120 pounds. It's roughly a bale, maybe a little bit of a heavy bale. At three hundred dollars a ton, that hundred and twenty pounds is an eighteen dollar bale. If you're pulling two ton an acre, that's thirty six dollars an acre. If you have a hundred acres, that's thirty six hundred dollars. If you have a thousand acres, that's thirty six thousand dollars. So we're looking at oh, well, I missed it by one. That could have been your treatment plus profit. So that being said, I'm not scolding anyone if they accidentally did. Um, we go into our trial. We treated ours at 2.25 first week. So it does happen, obviously, when you hit that 1.2 threshold, it's like, well, I can't get out of the field right now and do it. So it might be at a different when you actually spray. So when we treated our trial, we were at 2.25. So I have two lines on here. This yellow line is population at time of treatment. So this is our 2.25 going across. That's what it was when we treated. And then we have that threshold line that if we considered our hay to be worth $300 a ton, at $20 treatment, that threshold, that's 1.2. This is the untreated control tracking across every single week for the weeks that we did the trial. What do we see on those bars? Is it above or below the threshold? It's above the entire time. So sometimes we'll see dips and so that's why we want to be out and diligently scouting for it because we might just be in that time that it's a dip and then all of a sudden it goes up and stays up above it. But this entire season, at least from where we are here in Central Valley, it was above it the entire time. So we were justified to treat when we did. And even if we would have missed that, it never did below that. So this was a heavy year for weevils. Um, it was nice to see I was out, I think I was in Blythe four times this year um, in February. I was in Yuma three times. Um, it was good to see that I could tell selectives were being used. I was finding a lot of aphids in fields and zero weevils. Uh, so that's good to see that we are rotating our mode of actions. So again, UTC throughout the entire thing, populations never dip below our threshold. They were always above it. And it's not as great. This one should be a lot more yellow, but this was just obvious visual differences that yes, it's not only color that we're looking at. So we have a treated nice and green, our untreated control, much more yellow. This is the results of our efficacy trial this year. So again, I left those lines in there for you. So when we treated, we were at that 2.25. So this is large larva per sleep on there. So we were at 2.25 when we treated. Our threshold might have been at 1.2. So when we treated our Untreated control was always above it, obviously never get back down, and was significantly different than all of the other treatments. Um, we were testing TORAC, two different rates of it this year. Um, it, for, for the first couple of weeks looking at it, it seemed to do okay, so I, um, it's not registered currently for a health level at this time, so it'd be interesting to see when it gets registered what that pre-harvest interval would be, if it could be a possibility, because it didn't seem to do too bad in that 14 days after treatment. But by the time we get to 28 days, it was already above our threshold it would have been and reaching or above um, even the levels that we had before we started. Steward, we had two products in here, um, pipeline products, call them UA 2022 A and B. So these are at different rates of the same product. It is a novel mode of action. 
we are hoping good things from this and for it to be pushed for registration um, as soon as we can get it, especially with Port Fire. Port Fire Foss being pushed out does not only give us another tool in the toolbox, but a novel mode of action at that. I'll leave it up to, I don't know if I can pronounce it. Planazolin. So another nice thing about it, it is um, it is a low rate product. So some of these are Torak. We were up um, 14 and 21 ounce breaker. These I'm allowed to divulge. A, a and B were one ounce and 1.5 ounce respectively. So it is it is a low low rate product, which is also nice to see. Um, Besiege and Warrior Warrior is still doing very well in our area. Um, from those four trips of life, life is another story. I'm really looking into that one for my dissertation. We are seeing a decent amount of resistance to warrior out there. On the flip side, we're using steward now at 11 ounce per acre rate, whereas we used to be in the sevens for that. I think even high sixes, we are now using a higher rate, almost the highest, I think 11.4 is the highest rate of that. So we're already up to 11 to seeing that, whereas in that flight area, they're still getting away with the mid sixes, which is good to see. So at least they still have something that they can use while we figure out what's going on with the Lambda products. This is our yield differences. So everything in that trial, even though Torac did kind of break above those thresholds again, all of these are significantly different from the untreated control. Now, something to note again, 1.62 tons per acre for untreated control. Warrior, 2.68. That is over a ton. So if you are pulling or you're, you're, you're losing that and you're getting 340 a ton, that's 340 per ton per acre that you're pulling out of the field. And that's all I really had for you guys today. Um, if you have any questions, I think I've got a little bit of time. All right, well, thank you guys.